Doctor, nice to have you here with us on the program. You're a five-time New York Times bestselling author, and I believe we're probably looking at a few of your books behind you. We'll get to that in a little bit. But first, how many days, if people do contract coronavirus, can they go a couple of days while they feel great, don't show anything? The average incubation time is 5.1 days, which means that roughly 50% of people will go 5.1 days or less, 50% will go more. You do three times that for the average. So, Walt, it's about 15.3 days for uh, people, which is why the 14-day, if you will, quarantine, because that gets, that plus the one day gets 90 Eight percent of people. So 98 percent of people will go less than 15 days without symptoms, mm. which means you can be infective for a long time before you have even cough, sore throat or um, other things, GI symptoms or um, if you will, lung br problems, breathing. Yeah. So so to follow up on that, let's say I contract it. I'm two, three, four days, I'm feeling outstanding. Can I be infecting people at that time, even though, all, no? All the time you are asymptomatic, you are shedding virus. And that's the problem, that's the difference, or one of the major differences, while you highlighted, of this virus versus others. Mm -hmm. With the other flu viruses, there are three coronaviruses in the influenza B, and our usual influenza A's, which are H and N's, um, you can be, in fact, infective for a long period of time before you have symptoms different than the others, which is why the governor's quarantine makes sense. Okay. Um, what are some hygienic things that we could be doing in the meantime? Um, showering, hot showering. What about washing, shampooing hair? Is that anything that could, could help? Well, it turns out this virus is very sensitive to shampoo. That is, it's destroyed by it, and that's a very good thing. But any soap is better than no soap, and uh, alcohol is also very, this virus is also very sensitive to alcohol. Mm -hmm. So those are the good news. The bad news is you can have it in your hair for a period of time. That's right. Well, let me ask you a follow-up question, and I'm sorry if this sounds sophomoric, but you said shampoo destroys the virus. Is there some active ingredient in the shampoo that could be incorporated into some type of a vaccine? Was that a sophomoric question? Um, that, that, <laughs> it's not a sophomoric question. If you could coat yourself with shampoo and your all the areas where the thing gets in your body with the shampoo, it would be good. You can't. Okay. Uh, in other words, as far as I can say, that also kills a lot of our cells. Um, so it's not a real good thing. You know, yeah. a dead person and, and dead vaccine, that's not a winning combination. Okay, good to know. So, I, I had to ask. It just occurred to me. Okay, uh, people making... No, but that would be a brilliant question because maybe we could coat ourselves or... or um, coat the uh, protective equipment with, um, we typically coat protective equipment with silver impregnations because mm -hmm. silver kills the virus. Well, maybe we could coat it less expensively with the, uh, sh a detergent or shampoo. It's that it's, it breaks up itself. All right. Maybe we did come up with something today. All right. What about people making our food? Can the virus be transferred on or in food, doctor? You know, this is something we have very little data on. Paul Offit, who is one of the great virus people, childhood virus people, came up with a rotavirus for preventing that diarrheal disease in kids, um, says that when he studied this, and I only heard him on a recording, when you, I mean, I heard him live, when you look at this in Japan, China, and Korea, there are a lot of GI symptoms, vomiting, nausea, diarrhea with this. So he believes this could be transmitted fecal orally. That means maybe it can be transmitted in the way you said, by food. We have generally said no, that is the CDC has said no, it's not transmitted that way. Um, 
but I'm a little worried that it can be, which means, what does that mean for you when you get food? It means heat it, reheat it again so that it is heated to 165 degrees before you have it, so there's no mm -hmm. risk of that. Okay, okay. Um, next question for Dr. Roizen. Uh, mosquitoes, uh, can they carry the coronavirus, uh, bite us? Is that how, is that possible? Um, you know, I don't think that the mosquito is a known carrier of this virus. So whereas the mosquito often will transmit um, some others, um, this one I don't believe is transmitted that way, and nor do I think there is any data that it's been transmitted that way. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Uh, for people who are staying in their homes, they're trying to avoid contact with people, is it still possible to get coronavirus if you stay in your home despite your best efforts? I'm assuming that you could still get it. Um, it is rare. In other words, let's go and say if your heating system mm -hmm. and cooling system are totally separate from everyone else's, that, and there's no recirculation from any other person to you, then it, it would be infinitesimally small chance. Okay, good to know. Um, how? Next In, question. Okay, sure. go ahead. Go ahead, doctor. Now, what you want to do if you are in a system where you recirculate air, mm -hmm. an airplane, for example, airplanes now have ultraviolet light in their filters, so they kill the, the viruses, at least some airplanes do, kill the viruses before the air is recirculated, so no chance there. But many apartment buildings have HEPA filters only and not the ultraviolet light, so in a apartment building that recirculates from one apartment to another, it's small chance, but it is possible. Okay, next question. You're out in the open. We're encouraged to walk, exercise, do all of that, uh, get some fresh air. Um, but how safe is it to be outside? How far, what's the distance? Are you still six feet or more? It's six feet or more is what it, I mean, it's very interesting. On our street, I live in Cleveland, um, I work at the Cleveland Clinic, and I live at Cle in Cleveland. And the distance in Cleveland, in, in Shaker Heights, they've now put signs on the sidewalks to so you walk all in one direction. So it's easy to stay six feet behind or ahead of the person. Um, it's an interesting thing. I think it, it's, a, and people on the other side of the street want to say hello all the time, et cetera. Yeah. It isn't just California, a Cleveland thing, it's a, it can be a, a California thing, meaning people are, are anxious for contact with other people, but are staying more than six feet apart as they walk around. Okay, here's a good one, doctor, and uh, someone's diagnosed with coronavirus. Is it, uh, are you still able to trace where it came from, who you may have gotten it from? Are we still able to, still able to do this, even though so many more people now have it? Um, if you've only come in contact with a very few people, it might be possible. So, um, but we think it's in the community now, which makes that tracing in, um, if you will, uh, California difficult, makes it difficult in many states. In Idaho, where it's so s small, or in West Virginia, where there's so few cases, it might be possible. So we're at different stages in different parts of the United States, um, and uh, that makes tracing in those areas where it's in not in the community widespread mm -hmm. yet possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, about 30 seconds on this one, Doc. If you have coronavirus, what are the first steps to not spread it to others? Stay in one room, um, put a mask on, make sure you uh, separate yourself from everybody else in as far as you can for toileting, for everything else you do, so that you're separate and don't touch anything else anyone else touches.